recording. Hello. So we're at the two minute mark. I don't think we'll have a ton more people joining given the holidays and everything. Um, speaking of holidays, Dims can't make it today. Uh, he asked me to jump in, so I'm driving this one this time. Uh, Amy, do you want to set us up on the antitrust and everything? I can also do it. Both is fine. You've made it here. Welcome, welcome in. DOC members present today, this is good updated, and our agenda today is open floor and kind of like seeing what people come up with. So, and Dims is here. Hi, Dims. So, super. I'll, I'll leave like the uh, like agenda slide up and then kind of like let folks just kind of start with whatever they'd like because we haven't done one of these in a while. Isn't Dims supposed to be in a car? I'm more than happy to hand back over. Please, please go, go keep doing what you're doing, Richard. Okay, okay. You're confusing me. <laughs> okay, yeah, open floor. Um, anything goes. Um, next slide will also just be uh, about the audience speaking up. So, um, yeah. Any questions? Anything you want to talk about? Um, if you want to go directly from from before uh, sandbox integration, now's the time to speak up. Um, If you all speak at the same time, it's really hard to understand, so. Hi, yeah, so this is uh, Ricardo from Tag Runtime. Um, there's uh, an open issue regarding the working groups and the process to create them. So I think in the past, when we have created uh, working groups under the tags, some of them haven't been uh, set up uh, so the TOC votes to create them. And then I've seen the working groups that have been created uh, the last month or so have actually gone through a TOC vote. So I think we need a little bit more clarity on the process and anybody uh, has any thoughts on that? 
which specific part of the process you mean the current pr and everything about how how working groups and uh, tags interact or or something else no it's a, it's about the creation so okay. i i guess uh well one thing is the pr the, the, is the pr supposed to be open on the tag uh, repository or is it supposed to be open on the doc repository uh, and the other aspect is that before the working group actually actually gets officially created, does it have to happen through a TOC vote? Maybe Dems can actually chime in on this. Uh, yeah, I, I think it starts with like, where is everything right now, right? Like if you ask that question, um, uh, I, like what is the inventory of all the working groups? Is it all listed in the CNCF TOC somewhere? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, Amy, do we have the consolidated list of all the active working groups in the CNCF TOC repository? It, it really should be in like the tags, like the, okay. the, the tags folder in the TOC repository should be like the one place. Uh, it might not actually be true as far as like where everything is going right now, but that, that is where all of them should live. Emily, you had a comment and, and yes, go ahead. Yes, so we have an open PR on this 868. Um, a lot of these kinds of questions, we wanna drive into the PR to try to clarify the process because there are occasions where a tag certainly has the prerogative to establish a working group to allow them to accomplish a particular project or deliverable or focus area that is well-defined and within their charter. There may also be occasions where the TOC is presented with information that we feel should really be directed back into a tag into a specific working group so we might recommend or we might request that tag take on that activity in order to accomplish whatever that deliverable or that specific ask is. The current instructions that we have around working groups did allow for working groups to exist at the talk level and therefore they would need talk approval for that. Um, we're trying to fix a lot of this and provide better clarification and better guidance and instruction to both the community, potential working groups, as well as the tags to understand like what does that process look like? Do we need to have talk members voting on whether or not a tag can have a working group? We want to ensure that the tags feel empowered to have some level of autonomy in accomplishing their charter, their mission, and their scope and objectives as they see appropriate. And then having that periodic check-in with the talk liaisons. So any recommendations that you have around how do we refine this process? What's going to work best for the tags? Um, how do we ensure that they have that level of autonomy and that level of interest um, being measured and engaged? We'd really like to get that feedback on the PR that I linked in the chat. Sounds good to me. So I think uh, one, yeah, the open question is like, yeah, the, does the TOC have to approve the working groups um, or not? And, yeah, what is the take on some of the folks here? There is no consensus yet, which is why the PR exists. Um, and that's like, I, I'm basically parroting Emily, but um, give feedback, like what, what is your intention? I can see very good arguments both ways. Um, and I think most of us can. Um, so yeah, that's the place to to give feedback and to have this discussion. Uh, from the point of view of like discovery, I think if we make sure that people can start in one spot and then be able to like enumerate, okay, what are the tags, which working groups are in which tags, um, if we set those things up, I think that will be much better going forward uh, because I think we have some of that information not where they are supposed to be right now, and nobody knows uh, we haven't, since we haven't written it down. So uh, back to what Emily said. Uh, so let's try to update. Uh, Richie, you have uh, the pen on that uh, draft PR. Yeah. So uh, let's collect some, uh, you know, some more thoughts here. I have something on that as well, but Matt raised his hand before this. So uh, Matt, you have the mic. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure um, 
So I see kind of two aspects to this. There's the workflow that we've been discussing around like what's the approval or what's the actual specific mechanism by which, et cetera, et cetera. Um, from a slightly different perspective, I'm kind of eagerly watching to see where the authoritative source of truth is. Um, I'm putting a link in chat. Um, the graph project I've been kind of incubating on nights and weekends is getting to the point where I've now modeled the first sub graph module, um, which captures exactly uh, the relationship between all of these things. So working groups and who's on what tag and who's a chair and who's a tech lead and what tags are associated with what working groups. Um, and so I'd like to add working groups, you know, uh, in particular to, to that model. So, so, you know, that's the other half of this is just where statefully in GitHub is there a JSON file that I can pull out of to populate uh, this now that the GraphQL API is about ready to be live at least the first MVP of it, and I can use mutations to import data into it. Um, I'm at that point of the project. So so there's an intersection there, I think. And this would provide a GraphQL API that models all of these things, these constructs. Um, so hoorah. I'll also comment on the PR. So I have a... Oh. I was going to ask if it would be beneficial for the community for us to create an issue to correspond with the PR to capture some of these requirements and requests, such as having working groups listed in a JSON file, that way they can be extracted, whether or not that's on a tag repo or at the talk level, and kind of get more specific information that you all need from us as we work through and kind of refine this process. Because as always, PRs and suggestions are more than welcome on the existing PR, but if it if there are specific goals and objectives that you all are looking for with having an issue to help capture that so we can ensure that that PR is updated and reflective of those changes be beneficial? Uh, yes, I'm happy to draft and, and open a PR, if that, uh, rather an issue uh, to capture some of these requirements uh, in concrete terms, if that's helpful. Happy to. Uh, as a as a reply to Dims, uh, I think we discussed this in uh, within TUC to some extent as well. Uh, I think there is consensus that we need something machine readable, which can then be parsed and and presented wherever, but have something which is machine readable and and well defined places within the respective Git repos or what have you, and build this um, basically what what Matt also just talked about. Anyone else on this topic? Yeah, I think I think opening an issue is a good idea. So we can collect feedbacks from the tag fees or from other um, contributors to see what they, you know, what's their thought. Um, I, I think uh, at least the TOC rep uh, should be involved uh, in the decision of, you know, uh, or of the creating a new work group. Yeah, that's uh, precisely um, what what I think is best to be discussed in the in the PR. Anyone else on this topic or with a new topic? Both is complete. Or let's ask for the current topic. Going once, going twice. Okay. Anyone else with a new topic? Anything goes. Yeah. Um, so um, you all posted a, this is Josh Berkus, yeah, uh, uh, contributor strategy, um, a great plan for overhauling the sandbox um, application process. Um, uh, since you're having this, one of the other questions I wanted to have is, are we going to uh, revisit the list of questions that we ask for sandbox applications? Um, uh, just you know, speaking from experience of having prepared some of these, um, I don't feel like the list of questions really matches up with exactly what we're looking to know from projects. Um, and it might be worth taking a look at what questions we're asking new sandbox projects um, and, and kind of doing a version two of that. Um, the questions that we have there are mostly um, 
what Liz and a couple of other people thought of at the time as sandbox questions and, and haven't really been touched since the forum was first created. I think there is uh, some form of consensus um, that we that we should be overworking most of those also for the other levels also combining a few documents and and also having a central uh, central entry point. Um, I think that part is is uh, basically on the backlog by consensus already by implicit consensus. Uh, the main question here is, do you have specific things which you would like to see there or would not like to see there or merged into something like this? So. Um, if, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, if, if we are revisiting the questions, I can make some suggestions. Uh, should I do them on that issue? Uh, Sounds good. Or yeah, make a new one. Into a new issue. Um, either one works. Um, I, I did have a specific question I wanted to ask. So wh whenever we are going through the sandbox process, I realize that I don't know what the organization or a set of organizations, uh, and I have to guess by the email address of the submitter. So that is something that I would like to know, uh, if, you know, because that comes up every time we review. And also just for completeness sake, because this is highly relevant from, from contributors' point of view in tech, uh, contributors is also a good entry point into, uh, into CNCF. Um, I, I'm, this, I, I'm trying to discern between I or we, but I'm probably choosing the we here. Uh, don't think it will be possible to have a fully closed set of questions which give all the answers once answered and you you can basically have a state machine and you go through it with a piece of paper and pen and um and you know the outcome i don't think this will ever be at that point that being said there is um, much improvement to be made emily um yeah i was gonna agree that there is a lot of improvement that could be made i would ask um because I, we have the open issue which i linked 884 around some of what those process changes are looking like we can definitely reconsider some of the questions that are being asked um, and potentially add new ones remove some of the old ones or better clarify the existing ones that we have so that we're receiving more pertinent information if you have suggestions and recommendations i would say definitely please comment for them on the issue because a lot of us um, have either been in the talk for a while or have been around the talk or are brand new so we're very close to the sandbox process and we may not always see or remember everything um, or any of the questions necessarily that we ask of sandbox projects so if you have an idea or if you're thinking back to an experience that you had as a sandbox project that you wish that we had um, requested that information from you earlier, please feel free to comment on the issue with what that was. That way we can try to collect it all together and see if there is a more streamlined and refined way of um, receiving the information that helps us make more informed decisions about those applications. Anyone else on this topic? Three, two, one. Any new topic? So I wanted to go through the issues that we have open. Um, I, I leave the project onboarding alone. Like, no, 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 no touches on that. One. This is negative of a project onboarding. Uh, you just linked over to the project onboarding. <laughs> yeah, it's minus label colon. So oh, okay, will, uh, I was like, the wait, hang on. Remove yeah, anything with project work. onboarding. Can we discuss the the new mission of the TOC contributors? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a, like in the past, I think the TOC contributors have been on the CNCF website. So I think. Uh, it's up for debate whether the tags need to be on the CNCF website or or something else. So right now, it's, I guess it's just TOC, and and there may be some other places where uh, we may want to uh, recognize the TOC contributors. Um, again, I, as I pointed out in the issue, I I want to point out that. 
the only requirement to get on that list of TOC contributors is to put the tag TOC contributor in your personal profile. Um, there was no requirement to have actually contributed anything. So if you're gonna preserve the list of people that's there, you're gonna to need to review whether or not who actually was a contributor versus who just um, adopted the tag. Just for the record, we also jumped in topics, but that's completely fine. Um, my gut is that, is this a TOC question of where and how to represent uh, work within, within CNCF? So I, I think one middle ground would be um, if, if we are able to, store and retrieve uh, the set of all the uh, TLs and chairs, that should definitely go on the website. Um, if we make that machine possible, that, that would be something that we know because we vote on it and we get we welcome people in, we know when they step out. So, um, so we, we do have a set of people who are supposed to be, you know, the pillars of the community that are supposed to welcome newcomers and mentor other people into leadership roles and things like that. So I think that would be definitely something that I would uh, like to see happen. Ideally, this could also be generated from, uh, from the same data we talked about just now, um, where we have one machine readable file um, or several, doesn't matter. Um, and really generate this from somewhere. Um, I think if we can have like a centralized place uh, to have links to all these tags, and then you know on um, each to all these tags um, web page, and then under each tag, you know there's a list of you know I think currently each tag has its leads chairs, but also list for that tag can also have a list of contributors who are really contributing to that tag. Speaking for, for one tag that might be difficult to maintain just because unlike the actual CNCF projects, we don't have contribution metrics for tags. There is something which, um, uh, sorry, let me let me restart. Uh, Open Telemetry has some tooling to extract uh, names from meeting documents to see who participated in what meetings um, to put this alongside information which they can extract from GitHub and such. That would be one option to um, to extract this kind of information. I would just want to add that tag security used to maintain an active listing of their contributors and found that in doing so it was unwieldy to maintain up to date information. Um, I believe there is still an open issue with the CNCF to explore the possibility of a badging construct that allows the technical leadership of a tag to issue badging to its contributors because not all contributions happen in the form of a git commit or a PR could be an out of band discussion that takes place or a Google Doc that gets written and then converted into markdown in the form of a PR. And we really didn't have a good way of capturing a lot of that nuance and all of the contribution value that comes from a widely diverse community. Badging would be ideal. And I know that the foundation already does this with Credly badges when we have program committee members for any of the various conferences. Um, a potential expansion of that would also be reaching back out to uh, GitHub to understand whether or not we can issue badges to those individual profiles, much in the same way that you get them for the Arctic Code Vaults or Hacktoberfest or any of those other event-oriented badging schemas that GitHub offers.
And yeah, I'll drop a quick update on that one. Um, the Credly side of the house is actually in, in progress with the training team. GitHub is kind of like, uh, but hoping to be able to like get like more of those wheels turning. So. All right, Richie, passing back to you then. Yeah, I'm waiting if someone else is uh, is still. Anyone else on this topic? I'm, I'm actually wondering, uh, do we need to have some sort of uh, assignment or action items in terms of this? Or this is uh, more of a just open discussion for now? Or we just or open discussion on the TOC or the PR on the GitHub repository? I think after the call, uh, if you, um, we should go around, uh, like the, the things that we spoke about, if we could create issues uh, or comment on existing issues, that will be a good Ricardo. The things that you brought up, for example, right? Like, so make sure that it is covered uh, in an existing issue. If not, uh, we can just uh, please create a new one. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. From a purely formal point of view, that's why I, I started with, I'm not sure if this is even within TOC um, domain. My gut is that this is probably more a governing board, not a TOC thing, because this is more marketing and such. Uh, on the plus side, Dims and I can carry this into governing board and just have that discussion there informed from what the TOC and what the technical community within CNCF wants to have. Um, so this is not a problem as such. This is just formalizing this properly because else I, I'm, I'm mentally blocking this. Like, I don't think that within TUC uh, we can say, okay, this should be done. But I do think that there is a good way to just get a rubber stamp on the consensus. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Richie, for me, the problem statement is you typically is when somebody new is asking me a question, hey, uh, where in CNCF do I go talk to? Who do I talk to, right? So that we need to answer that question by saying, hey, here is a list of um, tags. Here is the list of working groups under the tags. And here are the contacts for the working groups or the tags. And you know, here are the people that are responsible uh, for uh, you know the day-to-day -day working of these things. So those all these things should be you know, uh, easy to find so that we can tell people, hey, go follow this thread and you'll find who you need to talk to, where they have their meetings and so on. So that, I mean, on the technical cool. level, no. sorry, I thought you were finished. Uh, no, I'm done. On the technical level, A, again, um, having, having machine readable sources or one source of truth, um, we know from both uh, Kubernetes and Prometheus that label sets are quite powerful. So, um, I mean, ideally we have lists of people, we attach labels to them, and then we have just different views on that data and you just represent that data from whatever label. And someone has label X and you have overview X and you can just filter it down um, in ideally not as a confusing way as in the landscape, but um, basically something like this and then just generate this dynamically based on what you're looking for. And at the same time, we can then overhaul the landscape and also apply label sets and proper searching and it will be a lot less or, uh, confusing. But this is a topic for a different day. Anyone else on this topic? Anyone with a new topic? I, I guess yeah, no. I don't. I don't understand why it wouldn't work just to have a list of tags and tag leads where we currently have a block of TOC contributors. I agree with you, Josh. We should do that. Yeah, that's and the easy thing to do, and we should do it. Yes. And to be clear, this is also something which I don't think needs any coordination across CNC. Of course, that is absolutely and clearly within within the scope of TOC, yeah. just decide themselves. And the mechanism to do this right now uh, is that we have to, like uh, for TOC members, we say 
TOC member in our, uh, in a JSON file in CNCF people, I guess. Um, we need to come up with some standardized naming convention for each tag um, or a working group within a tag um, so that then we can go around changing uh, that. Either that or uh, we have a separate YAML file that, that essentially has this information and uh, the generator that uh, picks up um, you know the existing information from CNCF people can uh, can cro cross check with uh, the new YAML file and uh, then render um, you know the name and the name of the tag and the name of the working group and things like that. So I think it's we need to get it done for sure, and I, I definitely support this. I also have thoughts on the technical details, but let's do this in the issue. I actually, I, I under current uh, TOC, right? I see we have, you know, link to the tax and then there, uh, so there are links to the tax and then under that web page, there are links to each tag. Under each tag, there is, uh, you know, they are, it's, I mean, the chairs, leads are listed and the working groups, meeting information are listed. So um, I'm a little bit uh, not clear. So what's the new requirement? Um, so, so Kathy, one uh, thing, for example, is in the cncf.io website, we used to have pictures of people with what, who they are and what they do. That has gotten dropped off because we cleaned up uh, what we used to have before called the TOC contributors. So we need to persist some information that'll, uh, that'll, that the website folks can use to generate um, uh, those uh, pictures on the cncf.io website. That is what is missing. Okay. I think the problem of having that is, you know, those information may be obsolete, right? So, so are we going to, are we saying we, we would add back some contributors name there? Uh, and what we are saying is uh, we should at least have uh, tag chairs and technical leads of tags at a minimum. That is what we were talking about so far. Okay. Phrased differently um, for contributing levels where you don't have a lot of, of churn and where you have more processes involved to to set or remove a stamp, it's much more likely that it won't go out of out of date or become stale or out of sync. Anyone else? Any new topics? Should we go back to uh, what Dims put into chat? Then over to you, Dims. Um, so let me share my screen. I'm on it. There we go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, let's start from the bottom. I think I should have sorted it the, the other way. So the landscape metadata, I think uh, we are in a good position. I think uh, the last I talked to GFE, uh, uh, most of the information is there. So we can move forward with uh, cleaning up that markdown file. The TOC contributors, we've been talking about that directly or indirectly uh, you know, uh, for the last half hour. Uh, the code attribution one, I think it needs a little bit more uh, input from other people. Right now it's just, uh, you know, some of the thoughts that I had. This was about how do we, when people want to um, grab a whole bunch of code from another project and use it in their project, what are the kind of things that they need to think about? And, uh, you know, how do we, they make sure, how do we make sure uh, that we preserve the notices and, uh, you know, uh, copyright headers and things like that. Uh, what have we been following so far in different projects and how do we codify that so that uh, when when somebody new, uh, when a new sandbox project comes and asks us, hey, here is the, uh, you know, the instruction manual, go look at it and uh, read and follow it. So that is uh, the best practices for code. 
Um, we talked about the request and response for sandbox and you know i think we have an update from emily there emily did you want to talk about that a little bit yep um so we've been updating the issue in fact josh thank you so much for that immediate comment um josh has extracted the existing question list and commented on the issue so before we start going through and doing this monumental change to the sandbox project and and changing all of the repos and the links and things if we can get as much feedback as possible on the issue of what, like the things that we're specifically looking for what are those changes to those questions that way when we get started down this process, the review period for public comment is a lot more simplified because we'll have a, a well understood structure before us. Um, so please take the time and go through. We don't have any real timeline other than we'd like to be able to announce it at KubeCon North America and start implementing the new process shortly thereafter. Um, the talk is actually fairly close to closing out the backlog of existing sandbox applications, and we feel like we've learned a lot going through this and trying to streamline it and refine it a little bit more, especially as the ecosystem continues to mature. So your feedback is welcome and very much appreciated. Uh, thank you. And I do want to go uh, to the two or more foundations, but before that, I wanted to just quickly cover the three, three projects that we are currently tracking and worried about. Um, actually, there's one more, um, uh, the open EBS, uh, I forgot about that. Um, so HCD project, they've been uh, having trouble with uh, lack of maintainers um, existing maintainers uh, have moved on so um, there was some uh, promises by uh, some organizations to staff uh, hcd and that is not yet happening there was one person from vmware who became a maintainer recently so um, the at least there is a little bit more coverage right now but what ended up happening was uh, from Google, I think uh, the number of uh, maintenance dropped from two to one. So, so yeah, attrition is happening, and we don't have enough uh, people with uh, the knowledge and the skills uh, that are needed for uh, HCD to step forward. Um, so, if you know of people who would be interested in it, uh, contributing to HCD, please send them our way because um, you know this is a critical component to Kubernetes. Uh, so that was a call for action uh, to the folks here on the call. Any questions there on HCD? I think we have, we have an update, an offer for an update. Uh, yeah. Um, so as as just speaking as as a very minor etcd contributor, um, the um, so <clears throat> a number of new people have stepped forward to help with etcd technically. Um, uh, either sponsored by vendors or not, uh, some of them independently, which is really good. <clears throat> However, um, we're still in a situation where the only two people who knew 100%, uh, comprehended 100% of the etcd code, um, I left without mentoring anyone. Yep. So um, a lot of uh, the situation is that we don't have anybody currently maintaining the project who really has a comprehensive understanding of all of the parts of NCD. So um, we're going to be doing a lot of self-education uh, around that and don't expect to see um, much in the way of NCD releases other than uh, bug fixes for a while. Yeah, um, so th there were some thoughts there from the NCD team about, hey, can we, um, can we tell people that we are not accepting any fe new features and we're going to be in a bug fix uh, maintainer mode maintenance mode uh, for the foreseeable future and things might change later um, and things like that so we should like encourage steps like that which will uh, reduce the burden uh, on the whoever is left right now so that they can help mentor the people coming in right okay so um the the uh, brigade project um, we got an update yesterday or day before uh, saying that um, you know the annual report uh, there was a um, uh, there's a there were some comments from the maintainers in the annual report 
uh, that uh, you know they would like to archive the project because uh, you know there's only four people at that time and most of them are not working on this anymore so um, I'm trying to surface that information here so that we can all go figure out like, are there people who use Brigade and, you know, will they be able to help, um, you know, sustain the Brigade project? So, but then we, so far what has happened is a few people stepped up and uh, they were not able to do the things that uh, were required. So the new set of people also end up say saying, hey, let's uh, archive the project. So that's the situation we are in right now. Um, and uh, we'll probably give some kind of a heads up to folks and figure out uh, how to shut it down in a phased manner, I guess, um, archive it. So um, any questions about Brigade here? Think once, think twice. Okay, and the last one uh, was uh, with, re with respect to health was Cortex project. Um, so anybody here wants to talk about that? Uh, Richie, the closest is you, right? Um, in terms of um, uh, the tag liaison uh, for um, observability. Uh, yeah, also just for the record, for anyone who doesn't know, most probably do, but uh, I also work for Grafana Labs, so many different hats, uh, many different things. Um, if you look into the, into the um, issue, uh, Grafana Labs forked uh, Cortex into Veneer and is not sponsoring development of, um, of Cortex development anymore. Um, that's part of the announcement blog post, which, uh, which Dim's linked. Um, currently, there are four uh, maintainers employed by other companies, um, unless I'm wrong, two AWS, one Adobe, one Google. Um, the Google person hasn't done much anything in the last year or so, um, and there's not a huge uptake in, uh, in Slack. On the positive side, there is uptake in the last two months. Like you can see the curves go back up again, and I do think that it's healthy. Um, at the same time, it's not as fast paced as it used to be. It's not as fast paced as either uh, Thanos or Prometheus, which is always like the, the three uh, in which Prometheus, Cortex, Thanos are moving. Um, the ideal outcome and this, this call for help would be in particular for users of Cortex, and there are quite a few large users uh, who derive value from it to start investing in it and getting people um, on payroll or moving them or hiring them or what have you um, with an intention to, to work on Cortex similar to all the other projects. Matt? Um, yeah, uh, so I've just updated that issue, issue 899 with some reports and some analysis that I ran uh, a few months ago and today, tomorrow, this week, um, I'll be updating that to to include the the most the time since uh, May uh, that that you were just speaking of about you know showing that uptick. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's there now uh, is is sort of from the beginning of time through um, through May of this year um, with some initial high level stuff. Um, and Alalita and I and uh, you uh, you know we'll be working on 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 some more concrete recommendations uh on on what the cortex project might might need but uh i completely agree that you know we're going to start with some of the larger users of cortex and see what their resource allocation is and, and you know start start talking to the likes of um uh, workday and, and and others that that are listed as um as as using cortex in production I mean, it may be that, you know, what's needed is community management and or project management. It may be in addition to to engineering that that's the case, but but we'll be looking at making uh, before the next TOC meeting some more concrete recommendations on, on this. Right. The inflection point for, for contributions is uh, March 30th. Um, that's that's the most interesting date, as you can also see uh, in the in the blog. Um, my own personal opinion is the main thing which is needed is more hands as in software engineers. 
Um, yeah. Uh, again, the reason for surfacing it here is so we can go around telling folks that, um, you know, this is where these, these are the projects that need help and these are the places where they need help for sure. Um, so I think I'm done with the list of issues except for the one from Emily. Can we go to that one, please? Uh, so, so Emily, I wanted to know where is this coming from rather than what you're asking itself, right? Like yeah. what led to us talking about this? Um, so over the past several months, I have been asked by various members of the CNCF, both within the talk as well as within tag security and other conversations I've had, what's going on in OpenSSF. Um, in fact, tag security has an open issue. It's number 969 in their repository to tighten up the collaboration between OpenSSF and tag security because a lot of their work is very similar in that the, the largest difference between tag security and the OpenSSF is the, the fact that they're we're more targeted on cloud native, which makes a lot of sense. But a lot of the value in some of these security proposals and deliverables that are coming out of the tag aren't fundamentally unique to cloud native. They're the adoption of best practices within industry that have been growing over the past several decades. And that's really where OpenSSF is starting to take off. On a side note, we are also within the foundation starting to see more integrations with other projects outside of the foundation, but leveraging cloud native technology to allow them to meet their adopters needs. Um, we've seen some sandbox applications come up where we're not sure whether or not the project quite fits within the cloud native definition um, and may actually belong better or perform better as part of a separate foundation that aligns more with that mission goal and objective. So I wanted to highlight this because these questions are starting to come up. And as with anything in incident response, if you're reading the instructions in the middle of a firefighter, in the middle of an incident, you've probably waited too long. So having that information kind of planned out or at least roughed out to say that we've had the discussion and we have a general idea of how to proceed forward is ideal before we're actually faced with making a decision. But as Chris Anacek has said it in the past, it's always nice to have something to work from as an example. Um, so I wanted to kind of bring this up here as I've brought it up with the open SSF, there are some legal and licensing and code of conduct kind of items that do need to be fleshed out that are more governance oriented, but I don't see anything within any of the charters, both within CNCF and within open SSF that prohibits a project from existing in affiliation with more than one foundation, either as a home foundation where it properly belongs and receives most of its benefits it's from, as well as a guest foundation in that it's featured there and it, those community members are actively encouraged to take advantage of, leverage, or contribute to. And this is beyond just the projects themselves. This also could potentially expand to the tags, the technical advisory groups within the CNCF, of which there may be some overlapping work because we have been around a, a fair amount of time and we've been doing this for quite a bit so we understand kind of some of the challenges in executing such a vast amount of work not with my uh current uh chairing the thing but with my my toc hat on um This is not something which CNCF can decide, <laughs> which is part of why, like, the, and I, I fully realize the, the irony of you running against walls, because uh, I, I do think this is something which absolutely should and needs to be discussed, as, um, as there is more and more overlap between uh, foundations and between their intentions and also more cross collaboration. Um, I don't know where I saw it, but I saw somewhere um, something about bouncing those things up into Linux Foundation, because that is the root foundation for all of the foundations, which comes with a whole lot of uh, procedural baggage, because different TOC, different people to work with, blah, 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 blah. Um, on the on the trademark and everything, and on the legal side, everything is Linux Foundation any, anyway. Amy, feel free to yell and scream that I'm wrong about this, but I think I'm correct. 
Um, basically, legally speaking, everything is Linux Foundation anyway. So this is, uh, it, it could just move there as far as I'm aware. Um, the benefit would be you can you can go to more than one conference as a first party thing if you have honest overlap. The downside is some people might shop around to achieve this kind of thing. Final thought on the downside, if you have, for example, two, two TUCs and they don't agree on a technical thing and they want to pull in different directions, who's the final arbiter? Do you have uh, an escalation mechanism within Linux Foundation? Probably yes. How would this look like? Who would staff it? Blah, 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 blah. All that being said, I think it's a good conversation to have. Yeah, I, I kind of agree in the sense that it needs to be dealt with at a higher level. I mean, definitely not at the TOC level. It needs to go to the GB at least uh, from our side. Um, and uh, uh, th there are a lot of paper cuts uh, for sure that will show up. Uh, I'll give you one example, right? Uh, I was reviewing, uh, I think, six store uh, stuff and the dependencies of six store. And they have like vast amount of dependencies, even when compared with Kubernetes. Um, and, you know, just uh, getting it, just thinking about getting an exception for those uh, dependencies is like, you know, is going to be a hell of a challenge. Uh, so uh, just small things like that, um, you know, dependencies, IP, copyright, notices, all those things are going to be like things that are going to be contested between uh, the foundations. Uh, it, the idea of a home and guest definitely seems to resonate with me in the sense that, okay, we'll all follow the rules of the home foundation, but we'll also get, uh, you know, uh, you know, starred or space in um, the, when there are things happening in the uh, guest foundation as well. I think this needs to go up the chain for sure. Um, th that would be my idea. So uh, I think the follow-up for this would be um, Richie, uh, and me taking it up to the GB level, I guess, or at least sending them an email saying, hey, um, is this something that you want us to de deal with or uh, do you want to talk about it somewhere else? Um, so uh, that is something that we can do, Emily. Um, is there any prior art on this? Has this never come up before? Is this a new thing? I don't know if Chris is on and can talk to historically if we've ever had this happen. He's not, I'm not aware of this. And Amy also shook her head. So I think um, this isn't really something which happened. Um, just to do the German formal thing again, even governing board uh, can't, can't decide this. They can only uh, inform it or suggest something. Uh, one way to get a quicker return might be to just poke Chris and check about it. Um, Chris, he has the appropriate amount of heads to also speak for the Dix Foundation. Okay, we'll delegate to <laughs> Chris then. I, I'm not saying delegation. I, I'm just saying, uh, in particular for, for Emily, this might be a, a good way to just get uh, something more quickly. Of uh, course, if Chris says absolutely not, never, um, governing board can't force it through. Um, at least not the governing board of the CNCF, the governing board of the Linux Foundation could force it through. Um, but. Yeah, those are precisely those interdependencies against uh, your bumping on the project level, um, which we will be bumping against on the on the um, charter or whatever level. Uh, so probably getting the gut of Chris Anicek is is a good first step. Yeah, as to Liz's point, um, the nearest, or Liz, do you want to speak up? I... Yeah, I could do if I unmute myself. Yeah, I, I was just um, pointing out that I think there have been sort of collaborative um, events between foundations, at least where they're Linux foundation foundations. Um, I, the one that sprang to my mind was um, the Continuous Delivery Foundation, I'm pretty sure did a colo at the KubeCon at one point. And I know Chris, when the CDF was first created was very kind of bullish about the fact that there could be kind of collaboration between those foundations. 
I'm not sure that anything really happened beyond the kind of coexistent, um, you know, co-located events. Um, I think it's, you know, there's there's some interest here. I think this is, it, it does, it would be interesting to kind of see the outcome of a joint, I don't know, open SSF and CNCF security group. That's, it does feel like sometimes there's duplicate effort. So I do think this is a really interesting idea. And one of the things that I want to highlight here is that I do not want the community members to feel like they have to forcibly choose between one foundation for the other if that's where their interest lies, particularly when their skill sets and their talents are well used in both groups or in multiple foundations. So anything we can do to ease that experience for them and to make it more enjoyable will certainly allow us to retain more of those active contributors and potentially elevate them into more leadership positions or we have the most need. Yeah, I think in my opinion, it might be just be better to document the collaboration between the both foundations and the projects and have transparency so the collaborators can choose, you know, where they want to invest their effort. Yeah, traditionally, it's uh, like we were talking before, Chris has the most hats. Uh, so it, basically what we are saying is like, if we get the people to work on both, I mean, uh, different projects from both the foundations, um, I think that is the best way to increase the collaborative nature for it. Uh, but yes, uh, Matt was also pointing out that, um, you know, uh, there is an event which is jointly held uh, is not the same as dealing with IP between the foundations. Matt, do you want to speak more about it? Oh, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, when it's all in the Linux Foundation, it's one shared organization that holds all the intellectual property. And, and right, that's one of the perks of, and one of the reasons people put their projects into the CNCF is, you know, multiple companies can work together on the same thing. And the IP is held by, one organization but when you've got two organizations so you bring in a foundation outside of the linux foundation um then you've got two organizations and if the projects are both part of both of them then how does that intellectual property work and who owns it and what does that mean and that's just a big hairy legal question um that i don't know the answer to and it's something that before we could go down that path we need advice on and anybody whether it's us the governing board the linux foundation board any of that stuff probably needs legal advice on to even know what our options are. And that other foundation we have to be a part of would then have to deal with those things as well. So they'd be having to wheel, uh, willing to even jump through some hairy hoops on that as well. And so that's just a bunch of stuff that has to be worked out. Right. This was also handled in chat to some extent. I think we are talking about two different things. Um, one is cross collaboration and cross membership between different sub foundations of linux foundation for example C, uh, cncf and open ssf and the other is to have linux foundation in something some complete distinct entity i think it's already hard enough to to try and solve the former i somewhat strongly believe there is no solution to the latter it's almost like you need a primary foundation and a secondary one that's like an oem like if we look to like you know examples in uh, industry, it seems like we would need some sort of agreement there to do that. But I agree, there has to be a primary foundation that makes the decisions, especially if they have competing TOC interests. Um, I don't think we see that now, but I think it would be, it's a good time to, to bring it up because it'll probably become way more common. And especially to Emily's point in the security space, you know, it's, it's pretty diverse and moving rapidly. And I do have heard feedback from various members that it is a choice today, whether it's open SSF or CNCF, and there doesn't seem to be a clear path to be able to be participate actively in both effectively. So devil's advocate. Okay, go ahead, Liz. So, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, as soon as you have this kind of concept of a host or primary foundation that's kind of owning the IP and, and setting the rules, it, 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 I'm not quite sure what the kind of guests, you know, can't, is there anything that the 
kind of guest side couldn't just do by participating in the host organization? Is this more about saying we want to rationalize some of these groups, in which case that might mean, you know, maybe there is no longer a, a I'm, I'm just going to pick this out of the air as an example, maybe tag security becomes something that open SSF owns and, you know, CNCF kind of ask for help from open SSF for security related things. Would, th would that not be the kind of logical endpoint of this route? I hadn't really thought about it going that way. So I don't know. That's I, I think that's entirely possible that things evolve and maybe they move in that direction when they become more specialized or big enough not to, you know, be underneath the umbrella of the CNCF anymore. I, I guess that's a great point to bring up. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that's necessarily a good or bad thing. I'm just sort of trying to think of where, you know, what the end point would be or what the direction of travel would take us. So, so the last thing that I had in that topic was like, hey, uh, right now we have uh, it, it, the OpenSSF might think that, hey, CNCF, you were in the limelight for a long time. Now it's our turn and you're coming to encroach on our, uh, you know, <laughs> on our things. So uh, that was another, um, you know, social aspect of it uh, as well, right? Um, so I don't know. Anyway, it's definitely above our pay grade, and we'll we'll start by tagging, uh, uh, requesting Chris's help, and see where it goes. Okay. All right, we're at time, um, so we'll leave that one be. Good to see you all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, all. Thank you. Yeah.